back guys we are shishira and navneet and right now we are in mestia and today we are going to go on a day trip to another special place just 2 hours away from here so mestia is one of the biggest towns here in the swaneti region uh, it's a north northern northwestern part of the country and it's uh, situated in the highlands of the northern caucasian mountains we've got like very beautiful views all around uh, yesterday we got here on a a little mini van journey and now we're just walking through the stone alleys of the the town and then in about 800 meters or so we touch the city center or the town center and the that's where the weather is so nice it's around 9 o'clock now and, and 10 degrees 9 degrees <laughs> Last night it had gone down to like four or five, and it was oh really, God, really so cold. Good. The sun has come out now, so it is going to get warmer. And as far as I know, the high temperature of the day is around eighteen degrees. Yeah. So right now you can see that behind us most buildings look very stony. So that's typically how the buildings are here. And all of these vans that you see next to us, these are the ones that go to the next village, which is called as Ushguli. Let's go there today. Should we buy some snacks before we go? Yeah, maybe we should. Oh, so we're just getting into this van here. It's a Mitsubishi Delica 4x4. So it's like a pretty big van actually because you don't see 4x4 minivans every day. Uh, this is what is going to take us to the next village which is called Ushgoli. And uh, there's like a typical shared tour option here. These uh, vehicles leave in the morning around 9.30 or so from the town center in front of this bar. And then you go on to Ushgoli which is about 46 kilometers from here. And then after that, Maybe around 3 or 4 in the afternoon, they actually bring you back in the same vehicle. So the driver waits for you. We asked a lot about if there are mashutkas and everybody said this is the cheapest option you can find. And the price is typically fixed because we walked around and asked quite a few agencies and they all seem to indicate the same price. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Thank you. And you remember this guy from yesterday, Hello. Dennis. <laughs> and then you remember her from all the other videos. Hello. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we checked all the bakeries, but unfortunately they were all closed. So we are hoping we'll find some snacks and some coffee for me and Ushkuli. <laughs> We have now made it to what is called as the Tower of Love. Okay. Name cafe. Cafe Maspinzeli. Okay. Maspinzeli. Got it. One loba. So we have just made it to Ushkuli. It's a small town nestled between the mountains. And the car just dropped us off at one of the cafes and they've given us four hours to explore this town. Look at those eyes. Oh no. <laughs> Clearly, Navin has made a new friend and he's ignoring me now. All of this is the town, and there you can see the fancy key. Who 
man, look at the size of this dog. <laughs> it's huge. He's so big that Shishira now okay, feels. I just go. <laughs> Ah, well, hello there. So we just learned that this village over here in Oshkoli is actually one of the highest elevated villages in all of, well, political Europe, potentially political Europe, because Georgia is still not a part of Europe. Uh, but this entire place is over like three and a half thousand meters above sea level, so it's really high. See, all the houses here, they're like built in a, like a different kind of manner. Like all the stones are just stacked up and then that makes the wall. It looks very different. And the towers that you actually see behind us, these towers were actually built to watch over not just the village, but also enemies that would probably be coming from outside. They call it the defense towers and you can see so many of them in this town. Uh, these towers are not just present here in Oshkoli, but we also saw them in Mestia and further away as you go eastwards towards Kasbegi and so on. It's like the typical Caucasian defense tower. Right, Dennis? Yes. That's what you told right. us. <laughs> and it's not to defend against Turkish or Russian or Mongolian, it's to defend against each other. Oh, oh. that was a twist. Just, <laughs> that's what I just learned on, on the way here. Oh, I see. We, we initially thought that it was for the Turks and the, the Westerners who were coming this way, but clearly not the case. We just found this small cafe right opposite to the church and we came here and we ordered Lopiani. It's a special Georgian bread and it has uh, beans stuffed inside it and it's so hot and nice and it's really good. And that behind there is a church. And that there is one of the highest peaks here. Do you want to live here? in that house there. It was a very small church, but as soon as you enter, it was like so peaceful. There were candles lit everywhere. The aura was really nice and calm. And they also had beautiful paintings on the walls and even the roof. So I really enjoyed walking inside. So the church we went inside was actually an Orthodox Georgian church. Uh, here in Georgia, I think the religions include both Catholicism as well as Orthodox, Orthodox Christianity. So this one is an Orthodox church and there was a priest sitting outside. He was dressed in black robe and he had a long beard. <laughs> we even clicked a picture of him after taking his permission. So inside this church, uh, it, it seems to be a very old one. There were a lot of rules like we can't go with shorts and can't, can't wear a backpack. Back but they did let us click a few pictures and shoot this video. So it, it was very nice, very uh, beautiful halo feeling inside. The and it's located at just opposite to this big mountain so it's amazing and inside they had these bells which could it was mostly reminding us of, of temples in Sikkim where yeah. again small stone temples small stone monasteries and then there are these bells and then there are these towering Himalayas mountains. in the back so here it's similar but the Caucasian mountains so that was one of the oldest churches here in this village and now we're just walking over to this viewpoint Looks like somebody has driven up a Unimog here and parked to camp. It's so cool to have like an overlanding vehicle. 
Would you do something like this? Let's do it. As you can see, Shishira is giving us a scale of this size. Shishira Unimog. Shishira Unimog. We're just getting a tour of the wow, Unimog. Wow. Oh wow. Wow. <laughs> It's so so there's a whole bed there. And yeah, if you a kitchenette. open the door, you can go to the first floor. Oh, there's a door here, and wow. uh, this is the shower. You can open it. The kitchen well. looks pretty big. Ooh, it. it's a it's a full toilet and shower. Wow. They have a table too. I think this is what he meant by open the door and. Oh, that's why oh no no this is which is which is the door you said no, no, oh this one ah okay okay uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so um, we only oh. use electricity mm. because uh, gas is different in every country mm. wow. and this is pretty cheap uh, mm -hmm. you know plate like this like 50 euros that's not wow. bad. Okay. Uh -huh. so we built it for uh, four persons with our kids uh. so we sleep there and here when the kids are here they uh, sit they... here when we travel okay. and we can lower this and then make uh. it yeah. out of this nice so, and and you have an ipad running your navigation yeah it's really good uh -huh. we had a very expensive garmin and makes sense it was terrible it was yeah. f everything was expensive oh yeah. and this is just an uh, app for I think five euros a year and it's oh. really good, really detailed. Wow. So it was pretty cool to meet this family from the Netherlands. Uh, they have actually been on the road for quite a while now. And they've been driving around that Unimog from Europe to Asia and they eventually want to get to India. So that seems to be their plan at the moment. They give us a quick tour of the inside. And it was pretty cool. Bear as a yeah. Yeah. 